Hey guys, and welcome back to Noob Node War, or I guess this is more accurately uh, Let's Play Musa. So, I have ditched level 51 and gone immediately up to my 56 and used his AFK funds to purchase a few small items. First was, I finished upgrading my Rosar Blade up to plus 15 and got it uh, to ultimate. Need to give it some crystals. And I also bought myself a duo green weapon. The plus 15 weapon, already had it, but I bought it as well. As you can see, I earned a lot of AFK funds. I haven't even turned in the koi yet. Uh, that's just like a few days of koi farm fishing. Uh, and it's 300 million silver right there. So I could technically afford all the items I need to hit 400 gear score right now. But that would kind of detract from the experience as koi is not always something that happens. So I didn't do it. Uh, so where I am right now is we're at Helms. And Helms is... Well, it's Helms. Um, you, you won't really have any problems at Helms. It's a fairly easy place to farm at. I'll stick it on my pets. So as you can see, I take a bit of damage because my armor is actually only plus 15. Uh, as well as the... Uh, whatchamacallit set? Alright, as well as the Dim Magical, but it's not really a big deal. Uh, I do take some damage, but I can just throw points into Divider to deal with that. Uh, where is Divider? Yeah, I've got it at maxed, so as you can see, I gain quite a bit of extra health every time I use it. In fact, I can just show you. So, Helms, as you can see, even if you're not awakened, pretty easy to farm at. I will be farming this in my Awakened form, just because I do not feel like having to farm unawakened as a Musa. Even if I do love his animations, before I get the Absolute skills. Once I get those, I'll definitely spend time farming uh, unawakened. But for now... This is what you have to look forward to as a Musa, once you awaken. It's a lot of fun. Like, seriously, a lot of fun. Uh, the, the one thing is that it does kind of mess up how your unlimited dash goes. You do need to switch back to the blade form for that. But yeah, it's really powerful, really grindy, a lot of fun. So, uh, my pets are out, I believe. They are picking stuff up. You just can't see them because I've turned them off. Uh, mostly to try and preserve graphics. But they are there. And let's also start my grinding hour. So this guy was actually only at like 20%, but I've been fishing with him for the last week, uh, which has given him a huge amount of experience. Like, life skilling actually gives pretty good experience now, which is why having your main be your life skiller is not a bad idea. Uh, it, it'll give them some decent extra experience. Like, my uh, Dark Knight has actually almost leveled from 59 to 60 purely through processing. Like, it is insane. So, now that I'm awakened, uh, there's a few new tricks that I have in my arsenal that I can really use to... So let's, uh, let's actually get up to the proper rotation here. Uh, to kind of grind and fight. Number one, divider uh, is still usable. Uh, just to get health back like because my Items are currently not the greatest uh, It's not like I'm using my Dark Knight's gear like as you can see I've only got 127 DP It's not like I have much AP either, but I do have armor which is good and Divider especially if you're doing stuff like helms more than enough to Just allow you to kill everything without dying. Uh, if you go to Saucens, it might be a little riskier, but here, pretty easy. And finish below the build. So that's one trick. Proge another trick is because you still want to use sword form sometimes, so blade, there's an easy way to get in and out of blade form. 
and that way is projection. So projection is shift R and B in the blade form. But if you put it on the hotbar, you can just get into it automatically. Uh, sorry, it's shift R and B in the crescent blade form. And if you just put it on the hotbar, I've got it down here at number 10, and I've got it bound to one of my mouse keys, uh, you can just enter it automatically, which is pretty useful. So per, your biggest damage skill as Awaken Musa is for sure below the belt. Uh, it's Shift L and B, and well, you, you can just see it here. That's what it looks like. Huge damage. Uh, very good AOE, very good cooldown, like it's got a very small cooldown. And it, it just makes life so much easier. If I had enough AP, I'd probably be one-shotting these with Boulder Belt. But I don't have enough AP. What's the optimal AP for Helms? 110? I'm above the optimal AP at least. Um, not by much, 117, 127, but as we saw, I want to say last episode, not hard to get up there, like really easy. And also, you can see leveling at 56 is pretty easy. Like I'm still using really trash gear and uh, helms, which is the reason I'm farming helms isn't for experience. Uh, the reason I'm farming helms is because I want to get Asula rings and earrings to replace what I'm currently using. So once I get those, I'll be able to leave Helms for good. And move on. And also the nice thing about Musa is uh, his Crescent Blade form is it's got very short, short cooldowns. You're able to kind of do everything and then just reset and do it again a bit later. You still have access to Chase, which is, you know, pretty much the Musa's best skill ever. And also you turn into like an attack helicopter, which is pretty cool. Uh, that's actually a pretty useful skill, the one I just used there. It's down LMB, but it's fun to see the animations. Like I do, I do find that one of the problems Musa's Awakened form has is the animations feel very repetitive. Although they do look badass. Oops. I should turn on uh, skill cooldowns again, but I can't really be bothered to do that, so. Uh, I should probably divide the next pack. Mr. Big Axe over there. Okay, this pack's getting divided. So the trick to dividing... Just get them all in front of you at once. And then switch back to projection once you're done... Uh, well, done with dividing, really. Disable that. Dodge his uh, big hits. Ah, oh, damn, I got hit. Let me up. <laughs> These new crowd control changes really suck. Let's, uh, let's get. Oh, oops. Fighting golems, like, these ones are actually weak compared to what a real golem is. And when you do your awakening quest, uh, you are going to have to fight real golems. So it's recommended you try to find like guildmates to help you or something. Because seriously, it sucks. So I'm not dividing these guys just because there's not enough of them. Divider, how it works for health, is it gives you health for every enemy you hit. So the more enemies you're hitting, the more health and stuff you're getting back.
And honestly, if I had better better armor right now, like I'm only using plus five as well as a pair of plus fifteen gloves. Um, the Roaring Magical hasn't been upgraded to Roaring Magical yet. It's actually still just the Dim Magical. But if I was using better armor, I would not have to worry about getting hit at all. I would just be able to kind of spin all day. Unfortunately, my armor isn't the greatest, so I do have to worry a little about getting hit. So, farming the Asula set is, I'm going to be honest, it's a pain in the ass. Um, they've increased drop rates on it, but I don't farm Helms, so I'm probably not using the optimal grinding rotation. And even with increased drop rates, the drop rate for the Asula set is still very annoying. Like, uh, as you can see, I still don't have a piece. I haven't been farming all that long, but I mean, it is still kind of annoying that we don't have any pieces yet. But it is what it is. Uh, farming the Asul set, definitely a great idea, because as I mentioned, it will save you lots and lots of money. So let's uh, kill all these things. And you can see my experience is going up at a fairly decent pace, uh, despite the fact that I don't even know what I'm farming, like what the rotation is. If I was at Rogues, going from 56 to 57 at Rogues, you can gain more than 12% an hour easily. Rogues, not even the best place to farm. I just really like it, the rotation's really crisp. And yeah, it's, it's probably where I'll go next after this. But until I get, at the very least, the rings and one earring, uh, I need to be here. So, I'm not going to talk about just playing Moose the entire time. Um, recently in Black Desert, the note came out. Oh, geez, another golem. That's not what I wanted to see. Yeah. Divide him. Oops, did I get crowd control? No, I didn't. Uh, so yeah, a note came out uh, where Pearl Abyss basically admitted that they've messed up and they're going to try and fix the game and communicate more and all that stuff, which is good. Uh, the next 30 days I'm expecting to see quite a few changes. Now whether the changes are going to be good or bad remains to be seen. Like, uh, there is no guarantee that just because they say they're going to make changes that the changes have to be good uh, or exactly what the players want. They're making the changes because what the players wanted was not what they uh, had done. But doesn't mean that the new changes are going to be want what the players want done either. But I am hopeful that Musa gets some nice buffs uh, with that the changes. Throw projection in there. Helm, Helm Iron Shields are annoying to kill just because they have a decent amount of uh, DP. Honestly, one thing that annoys me most with Musa, before I get back to what I'm talking about, get out of my way, seriously is switching forms can actually really mess you up. So if you just press C normally, you do this long animation that cannot be skipped. Like I'm holding forward right now, and I can't start moving forward again until I get it out. But if you're moving forward, you'll do a very quick animation uh, where you do a simple attack, like those. And... Uh, looks like we've got a bit of lag going on here. And if you're in PvP and you take your and you accidentally mess up into a normal uh, switch trying to get back into your other form without using uh, projection to get back into the crescent blade if it's already used, or without using something else to get into blade form, then you are going to probably get killed because you are defenseless for several seconds. And it is so annoying, especially in PvP, to have that happen. Oh, I got an event item, apparently. Is that because it's 8 o'clock, or is that because it dropped? I can't actually tell. 
I would bet it's because it's 8 o'clock. Oops, did he knock me down? No, he didn't. So another, another thing about divider is that it's got a very nice crowd control effect on it. Uh, the damage isn't anything amazing, but it's enough to kill the pack of monsters if you really need the health and you can just kind of spam it on them very safely too. Right, let's enter over here, the abandoned mine. I don't go in here too often, but it's uh, this is basically where the strong helms hang out. Which could be a little difficult with my... Uh, I've never actually gotten knowledge on this guy. Helms, like getting knowledge on Helms has always been a problem for me. There's actually a quest that you can do uh, in Medea. It's the first quest I ever did in Medea involved getting knowledge of Helms. And it took me forever. I think I hit like level 53 on my first character, which is a striker. Uh, not my first 56. First 56 was a Musa. But it took forever uh, for it to work, for me to get all the knowledge, just because I could not get the knowledge. So I only came into the mines like twice, and I didn't stay long enough to actually get the knowledge on them. Um, but yeah, it, it really sucked. And like, I, I've always just been unlucky with getting knowledge on Helms. So I never really tried to get better knowledge on them. We've got, we've got a bit of lag going on right now, as you can see. My pets are going to be picking these up, but there we go. Got to wait for it. Let's aggro all these monsters. Might as well divide them while they're uh, nice and grouped up. I do wish I could get knowledge of them pretty soon, just because I'd like to be able to see uh, how much damage I'm doing to them. Oh, got knocked down. Um, as it can be really annoying to be fighting these things. Oh, there we go. D rank knowledge on Devourer. Don't have any for the Crusher yet. Sounds like a wrestling move, or, or a character. I, I don't know. One of the two. I don't really watch wrestling. Introducing the Crusher. It's one of the cool things about Musa is definitely the way they can illuminate everything around them. All right, keep dividing with all their fiery hits. So as you can see, my damage is not great against these guys. Um, mostly because I'm using green gear, my AP is pretty low, even if it's above the optimal. So it could be better, but you know, it could also be worse. Oh, there we go. Better rank on the Helm Destroyer. But yeah, so experience, it ain't too bad. In uh, 20 minutes, we've gone up like 5%, which is pretty sweet. Even if I am using the super nifty grinding hour. It's not like we're on the weekend, though, so I mean, we don't exactly have a ton of buffs running. I don't even have milk tea running, even though I probably should. Um, pretty good tip for anyone there. If you can, try to have milk tea running whenever you're grinding. It's not a huge boost, but it's enough, and the health regeneration is very nice to have if you're on a class like Musa that uh, doesn't necessarily have the highest health regen. Oh, hello. Since I don't want to die here, let's uh, start dividing.
Helms have this annoying thing where they're kind of like immune to a lot of crowd control. Uh, which makes Divider a bit worse against them. But it's not too, too bad. So as you can see, I still don't even have a single <laughs> Oscilla drop from them. Um, which kind of compounds just how annoying getting the Oscilla set is. I did get a Grunnel Helmet drop. Uh, a few other items. I've already got in about half a million worth of hel helmet ornaments. A uh, decent amount of other stuff as well. So I mean, the money we're making isn't too bad. And honestly, I don't, I don't really find helms good for money anyways. There are, if you wanted money in Medea, I would just go to Saucens. Uh, rogues aren't bad either. Mains are not the greatest, I'll be honest. The packs are too weird for proper farming. Yeah, so back to the letter. Um, I am pretty excited about it. Like, I would love for them to actually take PvP in this game a bit more seriously. But I'm not going to wait with bated breath and expect them to fix everything in the game. And it is a little... The cynic inside of me wants to say the main reason they're, they're finally doing this, even though they pissed us off plenty of times in the past and been fine with it, is because Bless is coming out uh, soon. Now, the reason I'm not super cynical about that is because Bless has already been released in multiple other regions where it's failed multiple times. Uh, which means that... Oh, jeez, that is not good. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, jeez, am I, I going to die? I might, I might die here. Yep. This way you should always bring potions. <laughs> like, divider only works if you're able to use it, right? And if you can't use it... It's not gonna work. Yeah, sounds obvious, but probably on the same level of wisdom as my. If you kill them, they die. From uh, I don't want to say last episode. Every time I listen to that, I'm like, I should have cut that out. So you might be a little ambitious, honestly, to be farming the mine um, with my current armor. Like, the mine is the hardest part of farming helms. So let's, let's just leave the mine for now. Yeah, back outside where we can uh, almost one-shot everything. And where they don't, they don't do much damage to us. Right, there's a bunch of different entrances to the mine. Like, it's not hard to get into the mine. Um. <coughs> Bless me. It's not hard to get into the mine. It's just kind of annoying at times. Um, if you can't, like, remember where the entrances are. But, yeah, so the letter, cautiously optimistic. Um, don't don't want to count the chickens before they hatch or anything. So I'm not going to go, oh, Black Desert's going to be amazing, guys. Everyone should join Black Desert and try to get all my friends to start playing, but... I would like it if some of my friends started playing. Like, I don't even think most of my friends know I have a YouTube channel just because none of them play Black Desert. So, none of them are exposed to it. I don't really tell that many people that I've got a YouTube channel. Uh, like, I think a bunch of my, my coworkers know because I make a ton of scripts while I'm just sitting around at work. And a few of my family members know. But it's not like a ton of people know that I've got a YouTube channel. Then again, I mean, I've only got just under 4,000 subscribers. It's not like a ton of people know who I even am. I should really start, like, posting to Reddit or something. But I don't want to be that guy that, like, spams the subreddit with new stuff. Like, there's that guy that started making the patch notes, the Reddit edition patch notes, um, which it, it was fine the first time. But then he's, there's like two or three people doing it now, and like they do it for each event too, so you'll have like four or five posts at the same time. And the server doesn't, doesn't move that quickly, but it is kind of annoying to see it flooded like that. So yeah. 
Also, this, this is kind of why Black Desert isn't a great game for streaming. Like, there's only so much you can do and discuss while you're talking, while you're discussing it and playing it. It requires just enough of your concentration uh, while grinding that you can't have a great conversation. And just little enough that you can still kind of talk and discuss things in general. So, plus, watching it isn't that interesting because once you... Uh, Like they're praying or something. Uh, because one, once you've seen them grind for the first half hour, you've seen them grind for the next few half hours. Like n not, nothing, nothing, nothing's going to change in the way I'm grinding right now at Helms until I get the Asul set and switch to a different grinding zone. And then like once I'm higher level and can get and have a bit slightly better gear, uh, I'll probably go to the same grinding zone like over and over again. So it's, it's kind of why I consider Black Desert not a great game to stream, but it is what it is. I am interested in seeing if Musa, as well as Dark Knight, get new combos with the update. That is one thing I am definitely interested in, because Musa's combo, like, uh, oh, did not mean to have Black, uh, damn it, that totally messed up my combo. So that's what Musa's combo looked like. Uh, like his main, this is my big, we're gonna end you all combo in PvP. If you could land that combo, you got the stiffness, you got the uh, crowd controls off, you won the fight. That's just how it went. But now, uh, now that crowd control is changing, and you can only get two crowd controls off in the same. Well, not, not including stiffness, you can only get two crowd controls off. So that, that's bugged uh, in the same five seconds now. So for Musa, you lead off with a stiffness. I believe that stub arrow inflicts stiffness. In fact, I can actually double check that right now. Absolute stub arrow. Stiffness on good hits, yes. So stub arrow inflicts stiffness. Uh, and I suppose I should probably be using blooming, eh? Absolute blooming. Oops. Uh, and then after that, you've got below the belt, or not not below the belt. You've got dragon's bite, which does not inflict stiffness. I believe it's a stun. Yeah, stun on good hits. And then you want to lead off into projection, which has floating, and into below the belt which is a down attack. It also applies bound on good hits. So, realistically, where are my Oscar stuff? Like, seriously, why, why do I not have any Oscar items yet? That's why I hate farming Helms. Um, re realistically, the combo, it should be safe because it's only got two after a stiffness, and the stiffness, you can apply a, a ton of them. But I don't want to say it's absolutely safe, just because uh, Musa keeps getting screwed over in patches. Like the only patch that benefited Musa, and it, to be fair, it did benefit a lot, was the patch where they changed how AP scaling works past 250 AP, and Musa benefits hugely from that because once you get to a certain amount of AP. Musa kind of just becomes an unstoppable killing machine and can just murder people with all the, its huge amounts of uh, crowd, not even crowd control, sorry, huge amounts of AoE damage. That's the word I'm looking for. So right there was a little trick for the Musa. If you use Fiery Crevice normally, so your F skill in Awakening, uh, so this skill, it's got a fairly long animation, and you can't cancel out of that animation. But if you use it after a, uh, not spinner, but this kind of sideways move, whatever it's called, cross cut, it comes out instantly. Um, 
which makes it much more viable to use because, well, if it comes out in instantly, you can actually use it without getting caught in the animation or wasting valuable time, really. Also, that's the Musa's 100%, uh, for those wondering, because projection normally only flings out one blade. Like that. Looks amazing, but it only flings out one blade. And the 100% flings out two. I want to say it gives it super armor. It, it's pretty cool. Uh, not the most useful 100% because it's kind of difficult to aim. But pretty fun to use. Looks really badass. And uh, in the end, that's what matters, right? Looking badass. So I have this uh, this costume. I was so happy that I managed to snipe this costume way back when, when I got it. Uh, like th this costume is the reason I started playing Musa, and it didn't come out for a long time. Like it didn't come out until like November, I want to say, of this year. And it was already out in Korea when I started playing the well when I started playing the game again when I made this account in April or May of 2017. It was already out in Korea at that point. Uh, so like <laughs> the fact that it didn't get released for so long really puzzled me and I was kind of getting scared they were never going to release it and so the, the day it released I just kind of camped the marketplace and bid on every single one that came up and I got it within a couple of hours which made me pretty happy. I do like how costumes are sold on the marketplace in Black Desert. I feel it's a fairly decent compromise between if, if it was the only part of the cash shop that could be sold I'd, I'd actually like it a lot um, but I feel the costumes the way th those can be sold isn't really too broken that even hit. Um, it doesn't give you that much money per week. It costs a ton of money, so anyone that wants to spend, they can. But it's not like they're gaining a ton of uh, silver for their, their reward. They're gaining like 30 million, and that's after the value pack. Uh, Addition is kind of added on. Um, so my grinding would go a lot better if I would get uh, more crystals into my, all my slots. But I'm not really too fussed about the crystals uh, on this character. Not on this character. I am on this character. Uh, on his current gear. Because eventually I can just swap to my Dark Knight's gear. Because she's got good gear. Well. <laughs> good, he says in parentheses. <laughs> Uh, I've got okay gear. Not necessarily good for how long I've played. So, is there a party here? Yeah, there is. Let's just avoid them. Hopefully they don't try to kill me, because that would be a little awkward. So, as you can see, Musa, a lot of fun. Um, once you're, you're awakened. Even before the awakening, like I actually love the Musa's blade. I just I feel the range for it's a little too small compared to what other classes get. Uh, he's got really good range on his glaive skills, so it's called a crescent blade, but it's really just a glaive, so I call it a glaive. Um, really good uh, like range on these skills for for melee, but. His, so that's Crush Crusher. Uh, really good damage, honestly. Shift F. Could use a slightly faster animation, if I'm being honest. But really good, really powerful skill. And it feels bad, good to use, too. Like you, uh, It's got a fairly long cooldown, if I'm being honest. But it feels really good to use. Like when it does come out and you hit someone with it and just obliterate their health bar, it feels great. Too long a cooldown to be the Musa's main skill though, and too long an animation to be super reliable in PvP. You have to use it as part of a knockdown or something else combo, where it will do great damage, but until you get that, using Cross Crusher is a little bit of a trap. Yeah, there's the 100% projection again. Really feels great, and that's honestly kind of like one of the best things about Musa. Playing Musa 
Uh, if you ignore how badly he scales initially, feels really good. The animations are great. The class looks awesome. Um, there's male and female versions, both of which have their own unique uh, specialties and styles. Uh, if you don't like the fiery effects, the Maywa's got these really cool, like, icy effects. She is the Yin to Musa's Yang. And I, I, I'm not just, like, trying to do Yin and Yang there, it's, that's actually what it's based on. Yin is cold, uh, wet, and dark energy, whereas Yang is hot, dry, fiery energy. Uh, men are Yang, women are Yin. That's a drastic oversimplification of it, if I'm being honest, but it is a decent explanation. So as you can see, Musa's damage, excellent. Um, Dark Knights at this stage would be better, if I'm being honest. Musa's scaling could use work. Fighting golems sucks, but they drop really nice stuff, so I killed them anyways. Plus, I mean, I actually like the challenge of killing elites. I know, I know it's uh, it's not actually that big a challenge later on, but early on, especially when I was like sub 50, fighting elites was a lot of fun. Like, it was challenging, I had to be on my guard, didn't have the DP or anything to uh, properly take a lot too many hits from them, especially if they had all their friends with them. So it was a lot of fun back when I first started playing uh, to take on, especially like giant main elites. Giant mains were one of the most fun sets of elites in the game, in my opinion, to uh, fight. They've got very obvious telegraphed attacks. Um, they do a lot of damage. And... They drop really nice stuff too. I think I got my first shelts from this. Okay then, let's uh We're just gonna mess right out of there. Oh, I'm dead anyways. She's got the add-ons. <laughs> okay then. Um yeah, so there is obviously the danger of being at level fifty six and wearing plus five armor. Uh you are prey. Like no two ways about it really you are going to get murdered if a high level player tries to fight you. Oh, I'm not even near my horse, am I? But uh, yeah, that's just how it is. Especially because when someone does that, like they just attack you without warning. Um, to be fair, they could have been trying to warn me. They, they might have whispered me, they might have said something. But when I'm recording these, I keep the chat off because I find it's distracting. So, it could very well be she's been trying to talk to me. I just didn't notice. But when they just kind of attack you like that, she didn't really stop in front of me or anything, so she just kind of flagged up and attacked. So I'd imagine she didn't. Um, there's no, Even if you're the same level of gear, it's very likely you'll die no matter what. Just because when they get the sneak attack on you, you don't have much you can actually do. They're just going to hit you hard, and they'll probably get some decent crowd controls off on you. Uh, they can get a decent combo off. Like, she landed two, three of her best skills on me right there. Uh, Spirit Hunting, Spirit Legacy, and a Seed of Corruption. She didn't land Shattering Darkness, but... Whatever. Um, that's still three of her highest damage skills. And... I, I didn't really have a chance to fight back. Musa, if I had better armor, I would have been able to run away super easily. Um, forget fighting. Like, I don't necessarily need to fight. Oops. Uh, I can just run away and continue to mess with her rotation. I can uh, try to come back to reinitiate the fight on my own terms. So there's the un-animation uh, cancelled version version of Fiery Crevice, because I used it after Spinner instead of after Crosscut. It's also kind of confusing that Spinner and Crosscut are both, uh, did I use it after Spinner? Or is Spinner down? I think I used it after something a little Twister, I believe. Which, I mean, is still kind of confusing. There's three skills called that, and only one of them actually has you, like, moving around. Yeah, Spinner is down LMB. 
so I used Twister, which is a uh, spacebar. It, it's Twister is how you regain uh, your willpower, which is the Musa's re resource. That and Musa's spirit. Those are the two best ways I found to regenerate your willpower uh, in awakened form. Uh, without having to rely on potions. Obviously, I should have potions on me, but because I don't actually have very much weight on this character, uh, and potions are pretty hefty in terms of weight, I decided not to bring potions. So as you can see, Fiery Crevice also comes out pretty quickly after Below the Belt. Seems to be anytime you spin, uh, Fiery Crevice will come out quickly. So right there, you can see it comes out quickly. After I use crosscut, it comes out quickly. I'll wait for it to come off cooldown. Um, but in other times, it doesn't come out super quickly. So that's the Dark Knight up there. That would be interesting. I don't want to mess with the rotation, but I mean, I don't want to switch channels either. And there's enough helms for both of us. So at the moment, I'm fine with being here. We will have to see how she reacts, though. She's clearly more geared than I am, but she's not amazingly geared, seeing as if she had decent gear, um, like my main does, she would have pretty much one-shot me, wearing what I'm wearing. So the fact that she didn't kind of speaks volumes about how much AP she has, uh, what level she is. A few different things. She's not that strong, but she's clearly stronger than this the character I'm playing right now, my Musa. Um, so I don't really want to have to mess with her. I wouldn't mind having like a fair fight against her, but don't think she plans to fight fair against me. So, you know. Anyways, uh... PvP, like 1v1 PvP, it's not too much you can actually do. Is there a blacksmith up here? Ah, oh, there is. You can repair your stuff. Oh, never mind. Looks like I have to uh, do a quest for him. Oh, no, no, you can. Alright, so we'll just repair equipped. 11,000 coins, ugh. And then if, does he have a shop? No, he doesn't. A lot of the random blacksmiths and other stuff that you find in the world don't have shops. Uh, so I've got to kill wagons? Okay. So yeah, th this is a little kind of like quest hub over here. Uh, I'll show you where it is on the map. It's kind of just at the edge of this, where the trees kind of have... They kind of extend onto this mountain over here, which kind of comes off the actual mountain range. Um, if that ex describes it at all. As you can see, Cross Crusher Amazing Damage. Yeah, so PvP for spots. Um, not something we've had to deal with before this on in the series. It's... It happens. I mean, I actually enjoy it a lot. Like, I've spent... I've actually made quite a few friends just over PvPing for the spot repeatedly and uh, kind of coming away from it with a new friend. But you, you also get a lot of people that are super salty about PvPing for spots. Like they don't like it at all. They, uh, they get really angry at you for PvPing them or for running away from the PvP. Um, and uh, it, it happens, like, you, you can't make everyone happy, but PvPing for spots is a big part of Black Desert. It's not going to go away. Uh, so you, you kind of just got to accept that it happens. And hope for the best. Uh, looking for PvP, like, I actually set up most of my add-ons and stuff for PvP, because I look for PvP. But if you don't want a PvP, Moose is actually a great class for that. Because, as you saw, the only reason she killed me is because A, I have no potions, uh, so I couldn't recover. B, I've got no DP. So 
I couldn't recover from what she did to me, uh, despite the fact that I got away from her. And get it, as a Musa, the only class I would say you can't get away from would be another Musa that has WP pots or a Ranger, because Rangers move insanely fast. It's just, it's what they do. And getting away from a Ranger, yeah, good luck. It's, they run so fast. And they've got a lot of decent movement skills as well. So getting away from a Ranger, you're gonna have problems with that. But a lot of people don't play Rangers, so you won't have to run into that situation too often. And even if they do play Ranger, it's gonna take them a while to catch you. Like, it's not like they're gonna do catch you, crowd control you, and instantly kill you. It's gonna take them a while to catch you. Your initial burst of speed is way better than theirs. Uh, it's just once you run out of stamina, uh, you're going to have to have a longer, and as well as uh, willpower, you're going to have longer to wait than they are. Um, before you can get back to going at max speed, whereas they can kind of continuously travel at max speed. It's basically the distance, the difference between a distance runner and a sprinter. You are probably, as a Muso or Mewa, you're probably the best sprinter in the game. Whereas as a Ranger, you're probably the best distance runner in the game. Muso and Mewa are probably second for distance running. They're, they're just that. Well, actually, Warrior, if you can do the, all the animation cancelling perfectly the entire time, uh, is really, really scary when it comes to uh, getting to and from places. Like, they've got a very fast movement. It's just a lot of people can't do the warrior uh, movement combo. Huh. I just got some titles for killing enough helms, I believe. So, getting away from PvP as a Musa Mewa. Really easy. You can continue to either mess with them by taking their spot, taking their rotation. Uh, you can go somewhere else. You can come back and fight on your own terms, like when they're... If you want to be dirty, like I, I don't suggest doing it, but if you're if you're more of like an assassin type player, kind of like I, I usually play in other games, um, you can wait till they're like fighting something difficult, like a huge pack in a place where they're not instantly killing everything. Do you just like teleport away? Uh, or if they're fighting like an elite monster, like the golems here. And go in when they're doing that. Get it, land a big crowd control. Uh, stub arrow is amazing for this because you can kind of land it before they're prepared for you. And then just go wild. But yeah, that, that's a really dirty way to do it. So I don't necessarily recommend doing that. But you can do that. Just saying. Uh, especially if they did it to you, it's fair game. Like, if I had survived against that Dark Knight, I probably would have flagged up and gone back to attack her. But I don't think I'd do very well against her. It's a lot easier to raise DP in this game than AP. And my weapons are not much better than my armor at the moment. Like, yes, I've got a, awake, a duo awakened, but my Rosar is only plus 15. I'm only using a plus 15 offhand, even if it is probably the best PvP offhand that's not Nuber um, or Kutum. So the best PvP non-boss weapon offhand for Musa. Seriously, I'm getting all these titles, wow. And uh, yeah, if they did it to you, it's fair game. So the main PvP combo is the one I was mentioning earlier. You you don't need to lead it from it from blade form, but blade form really helps because it gives you a range initiation in stub arrow. And then from there you can just kind of go in, land the dragon bite to get the, the stun, then land the below the belt, or to get the floating rather for dragon's bite, and then land the below the belt, uh, into the cross cut, into the fiery crevice, into cross crusher. That is your best PvP combo. There's, there's a bunch of other combos as well, like just landing below the belt is pretty huge in and of itself, especially if you can land it after, seriously, oh my god, I'm getting all these Helms titles. I wonder if there's, it's probably a title for each individual helm that, I type, that I've been killing. So, that would probably explain it. Yeah, this, this is kind of also showcasing just how difficult, like I got lucky with this necklace, I just kind of, I went there for a guild quest and I got the Mayasu necklace. Um, 
I'm pro I'm not even gonna bother farming for the belt. I'm just gonna get a shelter or something. For the series, I might actually just stick with bears. Recommend people get a shelter uh, or farm for the Asula set and uh, the belt version, and then just be like, okay, I'm I'm content with what I have. Uh, but yeah, I I don't like Elrix. Elrix is ugh. farming Elrix just sucks. Uh, those aren't helms; those are mountain goats, which I now have better knowledge of because I just slaughtered a bunch of them. Uh, I'm back over here. Eh? I want to say, yeah, this is way north. I've uh, I've traveled pretty far. So PVP, yeah. So that's your main combo. The uh, stub arrow. <laughs> into Dragon's Bite, Quick Bard Projection, Blow the Belt. Oh, I'm, I'm out of WP, that's why it's uh, not doing it. Blow the Belt, Cross Cut, if you have it, back the uh, flow for Cross Cut, Fiery Crevice, and then you'd use Cross Crusher. Um, kind of hard to do all that without WP. But yeah, that is that is your main combo. And then you've got other combos uh, that just kind of involve dashing around. Fiery Angel, which is forward F. So I can just throw some skill points into it. Uh, actually, I don't have enough skill points right yet. I need two more because uh, I took them out earlier. Fiery Angel uh, can be used for initiation, but its tracking isn't the greatest. So it's pretty easy to miss with it. And then you, you just got like you you just kind of trying to move around them and land a decent crowd control. Uh, try to make sure you don't get out of stamina because running out of stamina would be bad. And then fight them. If if you can't fight them properly, uh, don't worry about it. Just run away because you don't need to worry about fighting too much for a spot. You can usually just switch, especially lower level. Once you get later in the game, you can start worrying about fighting for a spot, but when you're lower geared, you're lower level, and you're fighting in places where not that many people bother farming anyways, uh, you don't need to worry too much about fighting for spots, but fighting for practice is definitely a great idea. Anyways guys, I guess I'll end the episode here. Um, as you can see, I've kind of started skipping showing everything now, just because it would be all just this. Next episode... Uh, I'll probably be wearing most of the Oscula set, or even better gear for that for that matter, for Let's Play Musa. And... I guess we're going to Gilly. What? Who wears a Gilly and farms at Helms? Um, uh, I might farm at Rogues, I might farm at Mains. I'll try to switch it up, I don't want to farm at Helms next time. But yeah, anyways guys, um, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, have a good one.